Hi everybody, I'm the SOLIDWORKS nerd and today we're going to work on a reverse engineering exercise. So the thing we're going to model today is this acoustic guitar. And I'll show you that it is possible with just this meter stick and this poster board. So let's get started. The reason I want to model this guitar here is because I want to build a custom case for it. So guitar shapes come in many different sizes and I want to model this particular one. All I got to work with is this poster board and this meter stick, so nothing fancy, but let's see what I can do with it. So the technique that we're going to use to model that guitar over there is that we're going to trace it on this cardstock and take a couple of well-placed measurements, and that way we can feed that information into SOLIDWORKS and get a fairly accurate sketch of what our outline of our guitar should be. So let's do it. Okay, so with a guitar like this, I'm going to take my writing implement here, just a pencil, and trace it out to the best of my abilities. Um, I'm going to do the best job that I can to keep this straight and true to the, um, you know, to the orientation of the cardstock here. But, you know, I'm going to still try and attempt to draw a center line that will, you know, ensure the symmetry of this body. Okay, so it's not the most perfect outline ever, but for the purposes that I want it for, just to make a case, you know, it'll be accurate enough. Alright, I'm going to get my straight edge now and draw myself a center line. Okay, so I've gone ahead and drawn myself a little uh, center line here. So I did my best to you know, match it up right through the middle. And to verify this, I took a measurement at one point and compared it to the other side, and I find that they're off by a little less than an eighth of an inch. So, a little bit of uh, play here, but you know, it'll be good enough for me. So now what I wanna do with our, our yardstick or our meter stick, I just kinda of wanna mark center line in, let's say for right now, two inch increments. So these are basically our sample points. And it's with this that I will be able to you know, set some reference geometry and nail down the, uh, nail down the shape of the guitar. So now once that's done, I'm going to go to each of the ticks and I'll just draw lines from end to end. I drew my center line and drew markings at two inch intervals and then through those two inch intervals I drew a line extending from one end to the other. So now what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and measure the length of these lines that go across like this. And it was with that information, I'll throw that into SOLIDWORKS and I will fit a spline to those points. So wish me luck guys. All right, so I've gone ahead and pulled a whole bunch of measurements from those uh, lines. I even got the overall height of that center line to this point here, because I'm gonna neglect this uh, little bit for the time being. So hopefully that's enough measurements to actually define the spline shape. In the case that I don't have enough points, what it can do is um, instead of taking samples at every two inch, inches, I could increase the frequency to every one inches, and if that's not good enough, I can uh, begin splitting atoms even more and more, but uh, looking at this, this should be enough to uh, define our spline here, so let's go ahead, launch up SOLIDWORKS, and we'll try this out. All right, here we are in SOLIDWORKS. Um, I have my poster board with dimensions right next to me, so let's go ahead and get started by starting a new part in inches because that's what I took my measurements in and we'll just start this on the front plane looks pretty good 
And so there's actually nine of these lines that I need to uh, dimension. There's 10 segments in the center, but only nine lines actually have a measurement to them. So I'm gonna start with a vertical center line and let's get a midpoint line so I can automatically get some relationships. All I gotta do is set it to construction from here. And whoops. So now we have this thing here. So a lot of you may be thinking, all right, linear pattern. The thing is, linear pattern will make all the lines of equal length. And if I remove that relation, I'm gonna have to put in a lot of work to, you know, get them linked up again. So I'm actually just gonna use a copy. You know, I'm gonna select these, hold down control, click and drag. And here I can actually stack just like this. So I'm gonna box that whole thing, click and drag, and drag right to the endpoint. So notice I'm actually grabbing it by the endpoint and putting it on top here. So now we have eight. So actually I need this guy too. Uh, one more, control click, drag, and I'll set it just like that. And now you, you can notice that these are an equally spaced, but I can take care of that with a, um, a box that only selects the entities that enclose. So you select from left to right. It's also grabbing the points in the middle. So I'm gonna get my sketch segment filter and box select all of those and set them to be equal, just like that. And turn that off and just going to do one more center line at the top. So I'm going to set each of these segments to be two inches. There you go. That fully defined a lot of stuff and the overall height of our center line, which is 19 and three quarters. There we go. Uh, we're halfway there. And now you can see all that's left to define is the length of these lines, which is just the way we want it. So this line down here is 13 and uh, 1 8th, I believe. Yes, that is correct. This one I measured to be pretty much 15 inches. The one above that, 15 and a quarter, 2 5. There we are. Next one after that, 14.25. And this one, 12 and 5 eighths, 625. There we are. And the next one was 11 inches. All right, and this one is about 10 and 7 eighths. Like that. This one's 11 and a half. And the top one is 10 and three quarters. And now you can actually start to see the shape of this a little bit come to life. So that's our skeleton there. So now to use this for actually defining our geometry. So you can see it's already starting to get a little bit cluttered up due to the number of points, which is you know why I tr always try and minimize this. So uh, the more points, you know, the more accurate you'll get, but the more clutter you'll have to deal with. And also it can make the spline behave a little bit weird if you try and constrain it that much. So always try and minimize the points. But you know something that we can do is you know, let's just use a new sketch. No one says that I have to put my spline in the same sketch as this one. So I'm just gonna exit this and just start another sketch on the top plane, uh, on the front plane, excuse me. And now I'm just gonna grab my uh, B spline, otherwise known as a regular spline. And I'm gonna go ahead and just link all of these points together. All right, so that's getting pretty close, but um, we still have to uh, work the spline a little bit. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab this handle and put a horizontal relationship. And what that will allow me to do is when I mirror this over, it will ensure a smooth transition going from going through the midpoint. And same thing over here. Just like that. And I could start messing with the handles of any of these center points, but you know, this looks pretty awesome as of right now. So what I'm gonna do, get a center line, just to use as a mirror reference. I'm gonna box these two items together. So remember, um, all this other stuff is in an inactive sketch, so it doesn't get selected. I'm just gonna hit mirror entities. And just like that, we have a sketch that pretty accurately re represents what that guitar was using very few tools, just a yardstick and a piece of poster board. So now what I can do, I can go ahead and extrude this to whatever depth I like. I, I'll go measure that a little bit later, but for right now, I'm just gonna assume it's four inches and hide that sketch. And there it is, that's the shape of the guitar. And that's really all I need to uh, make my guitar case. So the neck, I can actually pull those measurements online because it's a standard, you know, one-to-one -one scale acoustic guitar. The fretboard doesn't change, it's just sometimes the body, you know, depending on the style, can have all these sorts of different shapes. So in order to create a case, I need to know the shape, and now I have it here. So I'm, I'm done for right now. I'll go ahead and add details and keep you guys updated in the future. But for right now, that's all for this video. So if you enjoyed, please uh, comment down below of, of future topics you want me to cover. If you liked it, hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. But that's all from the SolidWorks Nerd, and you have a good day.